Hello again, everybody. Is this too loud, or is it all right? You can hear me, all right. Well, I hope everybody's got a sheet of paper, hand out. There are some at the door, if you haven't got one. Because this is a workshop, not a lecture. So I'm going to come down, so I can walk around and run you. This gives problems to the video operator, but that's his difficulty, not mine. Uh, because this is for you to work, this is for you to do things. In a lecture, I stand up and you just sit there, but in a workshop, I ask you to do things together. And what I've got here, first of all, is some little conversational exchanges. Where we have two people talking, each line is separate, so on each line we have a little conversation and exchange where one person, represented by the open circle, says something, and the other person, represented by the black circle, gives a reply. And this is really an intonation exercise. Though you could look at it as a stress exercise, because I think if you look at these examples, you quickly see that they illustrate one of the points of difficulty that I talked about yesterday. Have a look at the first example. The question goes, what's the trouble? Now the answer, if I give it no intonation at all, consists of the words you need new break hands. Now can you see what the difficulty is there, perhaps for Japanese learners? Some people might say that to me like this, you need new break pants. Well that's wrong. Why is that wrong? Here's how it should be. You need new break pads. A compound number. I hope you know what a brake pad is. On a motor car, the brakes work by pressing pads against the pedals and rotates against the wheel. And these pads wear out. They have to be replaced every, every few years. So when the brakes are worn, the brake pads have to be replaced. So this is somebody, a mechanic, explaining what the difficulty is with somebody's car where the brakes aren't working properly. You need new brake pads. And brake pad is a compound noun. Brake is a noun. Pad is a noun. And like the big majority of compound nouns, it has the stronger element first. So we put the stress on the first element. And we say brake. <coughs> break pad. Just you try it. Break pad. Break pad. And the answer is in Oxford Street. Oxford Street. Again, that's a compound noun following the regular rule where Oxford is the strong element, street is the weak element. And those are quite difficult words to say as well. Notice it isn't Oxford. It's Oxford, 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 Oxford. Just say Oxford, 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 Oxford. And then the word street is difficult. And it's of course not Sutorito, but street, street, street. Okay, all just one syllable, street. So the whole thing is Oxford Street, Oxford Street, Oxford Street. Where Selfridge is? In Oxford Street. In Oxford Street. In Oxford Street. Has anybody been to London and visited Oxford Street? Some of you, yes. Yes, good. Well, it's one of the main shopping streets in London. The next one. What happened to him? Answer. Now, can you see the compound noun here? Heart attack. The 
next one reads, how can I identify it? How can I identify it? That this question itself too illustrates a further important point, which is that you must remember not to accept function words. So we don't say can, we say can. How can I? How can I? How can I? How can I? And we don't say identify it, we say identify it. Identify it. How can I identify it? How can I identify it? How can I identify it? And the answer is to look for the registration number. Again, another compound noun, registration number. Registration. In real life, I would say it like this. Look for the registration number. Look for the registration number. Try saying it faster. Look for the registration number. Look for the registration number. While keeping this weakening, look for the registration number. And it's very important to start associating weakening with lack of stress. So we beat Look for the registration number. Look for the registration number. Look for the registration number. Get faster. And the next one reads, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Again, okay, remember the point about English syllables. Box, one syllable. We think of this as one thing, box. So you must get away from box into box, box, box. Box in the box. Box in the box. Answer? Ballot papers. Ballot papers. Do you know what ballot papers are? Yes? Tell us what ballot papers are. Tell me, what are ballot papers? For voting. Yes, in an election. When you have to mark your vote in an election, you mark it on the ballot paper. Then you take your ballot paper and put it in the box. Ballot papers. Try saying ballot papers. Ballot papers. Ballot papers. Ballot papers. Be careful with the final T of ballot. It's not ballot, but ballot papers. Ballot papers. Ballot papers. Ballot papers. You can assimilate it if you like ballot papers. You have got to stop ballot papers, all sorts of things possible, ballot papers. Okay, well there are five little exchanges, conversational exchanges that we've practiced. I'd like you now to practice them together. If you can do it in pairs, one person with somebody else, find someone else to practice with, and just go through them. One person can take the context with the white circle, the other person can give the answer with a black circle. Then when you've done that, then you can swap roles and do it the other way around. All right, do it a little bit of practice now. Off you go. What are they hoping for? And the answer is an improved payoff. Now, in the question, what are they? Notice again the weak form. We don't say what are they, but what are they? 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 And if you're doing American English, again, you don't say what or what are they, but what are they, 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 what are they. In English, English, what are they hoping for? What are they hoping for? What are they hoping for? The for at the end has to be strong. For. Even though it's not stressed, it takes a strong form. Those of you who know about these things, that's because it's stranded. Stranded prepositions are strong. That is, it is left at the end with nothing following it. When a preposition, because of a syntactic operation of movement, when a preposition is left without its following noun phrase, then it is always strong. So we don't say, what are they hoping for? We say, what are they hoping for? 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 American English, what are they hoping for? What are they hoping for? What are they hoping for? Hoping for? And the answer is an improved payoff. And there's another compound noun. So it's not an improved payoff. 
It's an improved pair. 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 Practice pair. 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 So these are workers who are perhaps striking or in negotiations at any rate, wanting more money. They want a better pay offer, an improved pay offer. Now, uh, the next one, the question is, what have you bought? What have you bought? What have you bought? Okay, notice the weak forms, not have, but what have, what have, what have, you, what have you bought? What have you bought? What have you bought? And the answer, the answer, a new vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Let's hear the falling tone on vac. That's the important thing. That's the nucleus of the intonation. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Again, a compound noun. Vacuum cleaner. A new vacuum cleaner. A new vacuum cleaner. Is it right if I say a new vacuum cleaner? No. It's got the wrong stress pattern. It should be a new vacuum cleaner. Tell me, is this right or wrong? A new vacuum cleaner. Right. A new vacuum cleaner. Wrong. A new vacuum cleaner. Wrong. A new vacuum cleaner. Wrong. A new vacuum cleaner. Right. Good, good, good. So it's important to hear the difference as well as making it. Well, this new vacuum cleaner, how did you get it? Uh, often when we buy things like washing machines, refrigerators, cleaners, vacuum cleaners, we give the old one in part exchange, that is, as part of the price. And this is known as trading something in. If you buy a new car, you can trade in the old car and to get something off the grass. So the question here is, what did you trade in? What did you trade in? I've underlined it to remind you to put the nucleus on in. What did you trade in? And the answer is, my old washing machine. Washing machine. Washing machine. That's a machine for washing. So again, it's a compound now. Not a washing machine, but a washing machine. Washing machine. My own washing machine. My own washing machine. My own washing machine. Next one. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Same pattern as the other ones. Weak form of R becomes a. Uh, what are you? What are you? What are you waiting for? A strong form at the end. Nucleus on wet. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Normal speed. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Slow and careful. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What happens in American English? What are you waiting for? What are you, what are you what waiting for? What are you waiting, waiting for? for? Waiting for. What are you waiting for? British English, no team voicing. What are you waiting for? 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 <laughs> you can do whichever you like. And the answer is the next Wimbledon train. Now this is obviously on a tube station in London. Sometimes you have to change at Earl's Court and wait for the right train. And if you want to go to Wimbledon or in the direction of Wimbledon, then you have to wait for the Wimbledon train. So if you want to go and watch the tennis, in fact, you have to travel to Southfields, but it's towards Wimbledon, and so you have to wait for the Wimbledon train to take you to Southfields to see the Wimbledon tennis. Anyhow, Wimbledon train is a compound noun again, with the proper name Wimbledon, the word train. So we don't say waiting for the Wimbledon train, we say waiting for the Wimbledon train. <coughs> if you said 
waiting for the Wimbledon train, that would imply not the Wimbledon bus, or not the Wimbledon helicopter, but the Wimbledon train. And of course, that's a bit improbable. So under normal circumstances, you must use this proper compound noun stressing. The Wimbledon train, the next Wimbledon train. Notice what happens to the word next. Listen when I say it naturally. The next Wimbledon train. The next Wimbledon train. Do you notice what has happened with next? I dropped the T from the end. Elide the T. This is what Professor Taniguchi talked about yesterday. Taking out, eliding, removing the T at the end of words like next. When the next word begins with a consonant, then we tend to omit it. And W counts as a consonant. So next win. Next Wimbledon, next Wimbledon train. Similarly, next train, next thing, next person, next time, next one. The next Wimbledon train, the next Wimbledon train. And it's much, much better to do that than to say next Wimbledon train. Next to Wimbledon sounds artificial. The next Wimbledon train. What are you waiting for? The next member of the train. The next member of the train. Yes, good. And the last of this next group of five is obviously about someone's passport. Now, be careful with the word passport. What's the Japanese passport? Passport. Oh. Where does the four come in Japanese? Porto. Passport. Where does it come in English? On the pass. Passport. Or American pass. Passport. But still on that first syllable. Passport. 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 So where is it issued? The local passport office. The local passport office. Not the local passport office, but the local passport office. The local passport office. Where was it issued? The local passport office. Again, let's do that slowly and then a bit faster. The local passport office. The local passport office. The local passport office. The local passport office. Okay, let's continue. The next five exchanges are slightly different because here we have the same context each time. We've got five possible answers in the same situation. The situation is somebody goes to a library and goes up to the librarian and says, I'd like to borrow some books. And there are five different things that the librarian might answer. So the context, I'd like to borrow some books. What do we notice here? Some. That's the weak form. I'd like to borrow some books. 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 I'd like to borrow some books. When some is just like the plural of the indefinite article, like to borrow a book, like to borrow some books, then it weakens in just the same way as a means to a, so some weakens to some. I'd like to borrow some books. I'd like to borrow some books. Well, the first possible answer, how is this going to sound? You need you, what do we need? A library card. A library card. Again, a compound noun. Not a library card, but a library card. Library 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 card. You need a library card. Which means a library ticket. A library. Second possible answer, 
apply at the issue desk. The issue desk. You begin to see compound now, issue desk. Not at the issue desk, but at the issue desk. Issue desk. Issue desk. Apply the issue desk. Apply the issue desk. Apply the issue desk. Third possible answer, ask for an application form. Ask for an application form. Again, compound now, not an application form, but an application form. Application form. Apply for an application Sorry, ask for an application form. Ask for an application form. Note again the weak form, not Ask for, uh, but ask for, ask for an application. Ask for an application. For. American English, ask for, ask for an application for. Ask for an application for. British, ask for an application for. Next possible answer. Talk. To the issue clerk. Again, the clerk responsible for the issuing is called the issue clerk. The issue clerk. Compound the noun. The issue clerk. How's that pronounced in American English? Issue clerk. Issue clerk. The stress point is the same. It goes on issue. Issue clerk. Issue clerk. Talk to the issue clerk. Talk to the issue clerk. My English, talk to the issue clerk. Some English people say issue, but others say issue. Issue. And the fifth possible answer, come back during opening hours. Opening hours, the hours during which the library is open. The opening hours. <coughs> Come back during opening hours. If you say come back during opening hours, that's nonsensical. You could only do that if it was in contrast to opening days or opening minutes, and that doesn't make sense. So it's got to be on opening hours. Come back during 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 opening Okay, so when you practice this one, one person has got to say, I'd like to borrow some books. Then you give the first answer. The other person says again, I'd like to borrow some books. And you give the second answer. I'd like to borrow some books. Third answer. I'd like to borrow some books. Fourth answer. I'd like to borrow some books. Fifth answer. So, practice those again. Off you go. Practice. <laughs> The next set of sentences are a little bit difficult because some of them have a compound noun, but others don't. Others just have a regular phrase with an adjective and a noun. And you must look and see which is which. So the first sentence. I'll get some sugar lumps for you. Where are we going to put the nucleus? The fall of the international Well, not on for you, because that's preposition uh, pronoun, which we typically don't accept. So, it's got to be on the noun, but what about sugar lumps? Are we going to put it on the lumps, or are we going to put it on the sugar? We'll put it on the sugar, because it's a compound noun. Sugar lumps. Sugar lumps. Sugar lumps. So we'll say, I'll get some sugar lumps. Get some sugar lumps. Get some sugar lumps. I'll get some sugar lumps. Get some sugar lumps. I'll 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 get some sugar lumps. Sugar lumps. Sugar lumps. Sugar lumps. The next one, though, talking about 
Bhagavad Gita literature talking about a cushion. The cushion's got some hard uh, lumps in it. Hard uh, lumps, that's not a compound, it's just a regular phrase, an adjective for noun. So, hard uh, lumps. So, the second one, we need to put our international nucleus on the lumps. The cushion's got some hard uh, lumps. Hard lumps. Hard lumps. The has got some hard uh, lumps. Hard uh, lumps. Hard lumps. Hard, 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 because in Japanese, what is it? Kure <laughs> sounds as if you've got a foreign card. But in English, it's credit card. Credit card. Credit card. Credit card. So, please insert your credit card. Please insert your credit card. Everybody happy with that? Credit card. Credit card. Credit card. Credit card. Please insert your 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 credit card. Next one. This paper's got some dirty marks on it. Is that a compound noun? No. Again, it's just an adjective noun. So, dirty marks. Dirty marks. This paper's got some dirty marks on it. This paper's got some dirty marks on it. This paper's got some dirty marks on This paper's got some dirty marks. This paper's got some dirty marks. This paper's got some dirty marks. You say, can I have a piece of paper to, to write on? And I give you a piece of paper, but you reject it because it's got some dirty marks on it. You want a clean piece of paper. You notice how I would, how then I would say, you want a clean piece of paper. Why did I put my nucleus on clean? You want a clean piece of paper. Well, this is because I'm focusing on the important thing. Not dirty, but clean. I want a clean piece of paper. A piece of paper is, we already know about this from the context, it's old information. Old information gets deaccented. The nucleus goes on the new information. We focus on what's important because it's new. A clean shade of paper. Okay, the last of the five. Does this contain a compound noun or not? No. I'm finding it hard to get a product number from the Yes, there is a compound noun here. Can you identify the compound noun? Product number. Product number. So this is somebody, I don't know, wanting to order a spare part, and in order to get the spare part, they've got to have the correct number. And I'm finding difficulty, I can't discover what it should be, I'm finding it hard to get a product number from the manufacturers. I'm finding it hard to get a product number. So just let's practice that together, first of all, a product number. Product. 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 Product.
I'm finding it hard to get a product number. I'm finding it hard to get a product number. I'm finding it hard to get a product I'm finding it hard to get a product I'm finding it hard to get a product Finding it hard to get a product number from them. I'm finding it hard to get a product number from them. <coughs> Alright, now you can practice those last five sentences. Off you go. A short break, a ten minute break. But as you go out for the break, please hand in the questions you have written, if you've written a question.